Hey everyone, how you guys doing tonight? Today, wherever you're from in this beautiful world. All right, welcome to uh we got a nice little crowd here already. Thanks guys for being here. <laughs> being here. Smokey was the first, he said. No, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, so welcome to uh my little uh beer re or my you know, review and um recipe session here. So it is uh it's a it's a solo one, as some of you know, and some of you haven't been here. I don't believe Smokey's been here, but um uh, maybe you've checked out my lives on this, but it's usually just me. Um, well, not usually. It's just me. But uh, yeah, we'll go over. We'll do a couple beer reviews on what I'm what I'm what I've studied for the week, which is the Russian Imperial Stout or the Imperial Stout. We're gonna do an American Imperial Imperial Stout today. Um, there is a difference between an English and an American, slightly. Yeah. Um, so. We start out with a beer review. We'll just see it. We'll go raw. I'll give you a little statistics first, and then we'll do the review, and then we'll go over a little history, and then we'll build the. Uh, we'll go over some more notes. We'll build the recipe, and we'll have another review, and then we'll head over to beer chugs. That's right. We're gonna head over to beer chugs, <laughs> and do uh, do the ABV game. So, I did the green screen tonight. I felt compelled. All right, guys. Right on. I know. I know it, Brian. I know, man. I was late again. I'm always late. <laughs> Juggalo, what's going on, man? Cheers, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. It's awesome. Well, I'm gonna drink my IPA, and we'll go over a little bit of. Um, let's do a history first. An IPA, I know. Um, these other beers I have are pretty rich, though. Woo! Damn the man. What's up, dude? <laughs> How are you doing, man? <laughs> so, uh, let's see. All right. So, the Imperial Stout is also known as the Russian Imperial Stout. There's a little history to this, too, and it's kind of interesting. It's a, it's a strong, dark beer coming from the style that was brewed in the 18th century by Thrales Anchor Brewery in London for export to court of Catherine II of Russia. So, in 1781, the brewery changed hands and the beer became known as Barclay Perkins Imperial Brown Stout. It was shipped to Russia by Albert von Lecoq, <laughs> who was awarded a Russian royal warrant which entitled, entitled him to use the name Imperial. A recipe from 1856 shows it had an original gravity of 11, almost certainly over 10%. And over 10 pounds of hops was used. Uh, more sweetness calls for more hops to balance the beer, et cetera, et cetera. During the shipping, this, that. It was also kept all the bad things out and everything else. So um, they have a high alcohol, high alcohol content of over 9%. And they are darkest available beers on the market. Today we use Imperial on every strong beer over 8%, sometimes 7.5 and, and up, I think. I can go as low as that, actually, doesn't it? Uh, but that word is used to express the ABV strength, the alcohol by volume. So a little history. Um, cheers. It's down the son of a bitch. It's going to get warm. Damn, what's up, brother? <laughs> nice. It's cold. It's really hard to dig down right now. All right. Now I get to take down a really strong beer. Oh, boy. Diabetes, here we come. All right, we're going to start with, um, I think I'm going to do this one first. It's by Prairie. Um, it's one I haven't seen, actually, by them. Uh, I've done a couple of their other ones that I think a lot of people have seen. Um, it's their Prairie Noir or Prairie Black Imperial Stout aged in oak whiskey barrels. I put my green screen up because these are black. They're not green, so you'd be able to see the, the bottles, I think, in them. It looks like you can. Stouts are definitely a very good style. I like them very much. I don't go to them, but I love them a lot. My wife is a big stout lover. 
She really likes the oatmeal vanilla style, the Otis by Ninkazi. It's one of her favorites. But this one is a nine percenter, I think. Who is this? Made by people who truly care from Oklahoma with love. Oh, yeah, they're out of Oklahoma. It's a 13.7%, man. Oh, no. This is going to be this is gonna be rough. I might have to sip this one and put it in the fridge. All right. <laughs> I like oatmeal. I like the oatmeal stouts. They're a little more smoother, and no, I just like them. You know, I like the, the creaminess. I don't really like nitros too much, but it depends on what that nitro tastes like, I guess, what kind of mouthfeel you're getting out of it and all that, how much body it has, you know, they get kind of light and weird. Um, this was bottled a little, I can't read it. It's on there though. 13.7 though. I mean, shoot, dude, this is, I should probably change glasses to the small snifter. I was going to use the big one. Well, it's not really a snifter. It? It's not really a snifter. It's kind of a snifter. What do you call these glasses? I guess they're. It's just a big old fucking globe. It's, it's like fucking Earth. Okay, uh, let's do it. Wow, dude, this is molassesy as hell, dude. I'm gonna go low on that. It's like a wine. You know what I'm saying? Thirteen seven. It's like a wine. Probably even yeah, it's about range, man. Of the ones that the, the like the red wine, you know, they got like 12, 5 or 13, 13, 5. Um super viscous, man. I mean, <laughs> there's no head. Uh it's there, and I could have probably poured more aggressively. Uh <laughs> it's got like a tar look to it. Like the head is really chocolatey and cocoa, if there was one. Um, and I'm afraid to even See? No, you can't, man. I can't stir it. So let's go for the nose. Oh, dude, it smells like it smells like whiskey. It smells like a little vanilla whiskey. The barrels, you're getting the wood, you're getting molasses, you're getting even a little tobacco in this, some leather. It's one of those kinds. It's a real rich, thick, complex. You know, and none of the none of the flavors are actually too overwhelming. They all kind of blend good. It's not too spicy. It's not too, like, spicy in the sinus when I smell it in. You know, it's not too alcohol or anything. It's not a whole lot of alcohol. It's not too boozy smelling. Just that rich chocolate's getting the dark reach. The rich chocolates you're getting um, a kind of like a, a sweet chocolate, a sweet dark chocolate with um, a slight. You get a slight espresso, slight espresso. No head. If it was, it would be a, a very dark, a deep, rich cocoa head because it, it looks that way. It's very, you can see the legs already dropping down. It's super sugary and molassesy and brown sugary and yummy looking. Uh, dark brown, real dark brown, pushing the higher SRMs on the color. Just looking at your guys' comments. Yeah, this one's a bad <laughs> 13.7, man. I mean, come on. I know the legs are definitely are definitely stretching. <laughs> Never drink a stout. Had a port had such a strong metallic taste. I had oh yeah, you get sometimes you get if you um what I've done is I've let I've poured out of a can, right? And you get that like penny taste or something right away. You gotta let it aerate a little bit, kind of let it all out. Sometimes that helps, but then again, it could just be an off flavor. Just experience of what I've had gone through. But I've said a lot of bad things about one beer, tried it again, it was really good. It's like, what the fuck, dude? So, good day. What's up, man? How you doing? All right. Good to have you, man. I'm back. Damn, so much stuff going on. Sorry. What's up, everyone? Dan Thrash, folks, here at Sorry, I've been uh, so absent, still recovering from that. I, I did not know you were freaking in an accident. Damn it. Sorry to hear that. Please get better, man. Damn, I'm, I'm just glad you're still here. It's awesome. Ah, oh, man, sorry to hear that. Um, Thrash, man, hell yeah. <laughs> so we got, hopefully we're going to get the same flavors as we get in the aromas. That's what I... 
as I was reading today, yesterday, the day before, just kind of going through trying to storm my mind with things. Uh, that's one thing it mentioned is that you want you you would like someone. Uh, it was a brewer that was writing an article, and he he was just stating that it's good to have a beer. Obviously, that if it smells the way you're tasting it, it's it's going to be a really well balanced beer. You know, you're getting the aromas out, the smell, everything is tasting the same and equal. It's really nice. I like it like that. Um, I, I don't like it when you smell a beer and it totally smells like crap. And then you drink it, it's, it's like the best thing you've ever had. That doesn't, that's weird. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, let's taste this. Smooth. Uh, the uh, Like a prune fruit, like a plum or something. There's a sweet, and that's not the first thing I got though. First thing I got was like the vanilla uh, whiskey. It is a whiskey barrel. I'm sure it is. Did I say that? Yeah. So I do. I get the whiskey. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I wasn't lying to myself here. I get the whiskey. There's a little vanilla, a little woody barrel, like like uh, uh, richness in there. You know, that real nice woody, like um, oak aged like taste. Right on, the, right on the front of the tongue. Smooth as could be. Creamy, sweet, sticky, viscous. Uh, brown sugar, freaking molasses thick, lathering and mouth coating all throughout your mouth, on your tongue, on your soft, hard palate, pushing back into this kind of a longer finish, actually, um, which is another quality it has. It's a kind of a longer, more lathering finish, but it dries off in the back and lets go right at the back. So it really gives you this nice flavor all throughout your mouth. I'm getting the warming up on my cheeks, up on the back of my tongue up on my throat, warming, just warm, and then a dry off, and then a slight kind of a, like a saliva buildup in the back of the throat. Makes you gotta like swallow it down. Very, very oil canny, very viscous, a very good beer, uh, very well balanced. The alcohol's hidden well, uh, booziness is, is, is very, it's there, it's warming, just like I said in the chest now, it's starting to get a little warm. Very nice. Out of five hops, I am definitely giving this five hops, man. Well, let's go 4.95 because from Nina Yordi's little saying yesterday, I'm going to go not quite five, but you get the picture. It's a very good beer. It's a very good beer. So, I mean, it, it's it's nice. It's a sipper. It's not something you're going to go uh, John and Neely down your throat. You know what I'm saying? La, 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 la. I ain't take that. Dude, you take that down. You're going to get drunk with a couple of these, homie. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just playing. But um, John and Neely's really cool, you guys. Check him out. That's his channel name. Check him out. Um, hey, Sun City, what's up, man? How you doing, bro? Good to have you here, man. Right on. <laughs> Let me get to you guys real quick. We'll, uh, we'll pop into some experience. 4.95. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all got Sun City yet? <laughs> Glad you're doing better than Dan the Man. <laughs> oh, shit. John and Neely, there you go. There you go. Thank you, Thrash. Thank you, Brian. All right, man. We've got some oh, 10 people here. This is great, man. I'll try to make this exciting. It gets a little boring when I get into the recipe. Um, this is definitely uh, for everyone. It's for everyone. You know, I, I invite everyone. It's uh, particularly uh, you know, brewing uh, as far as like brewing beer and all that. Um, if, if that's if that's of interest, you're going to love. If not, then I'm glad you're here and we're going to have a good time. <laughs> so um, but let's uh, I'm going to talk about the beer. Um, itself kind of get in not the history but just more or less uh, kind of the uh, the statistics of it and um, maybe a little notes I don't want to go over it all because uh, it's it's really long and extensive it's it's quite a big beer and bigger beers really take a lot more uh, whew, they're bigger grain bills that's for sure um, let me okay I got my brewing instructions let me get my vitals my statistics here we go. So all these uh, links are in my description. Um, you brand new to beer? Oh, let me go back here. Hell yeah. Love it, man. You guys awesome. Thank you so much for being here, man. This is great. This is great. 
Total respect, man. Brand new to beer stats are my gateway. So this is pretty oh, awesome, man. That's good to hear. I'm glad you're here, man. Glad you're here, Smokey. Right on, good day. Cheers, bro. All right. Uh, no, I don't have coronavirus. I'm I, I, sorry. I swear I don't. I just sniffed a little. Um, so all the uh, links are, are uh, you know, I've got a lot of stuff for this. Uh, it really comes down to the stout, you know, the stout itself, the actual stout style. And then it kind of goes up from there. You know, you got your oatmeal stouts, your American stouts, your English stouts, you got this, that, this, that. And then you got your Imperials, um, uh, Russian Imperials, Imperials, you got your English Imperials, you got your American Imperials. Um, uh, it's just, it's, it's so anyway. Um, so the American Imperial Stout, and uh, these are vital statistics I got from craftbeer.com is uh, SRM, the color is 39 to 40, which is really dark. Uh, IBU is 50 to 80. Of course, they're going to have to put more hops in there uh, in order to balance out the sweetness. Uh, otherwise, it'll, it'll become too accurate and, and crazy, and you just don't want the, the – ah, it's too much. you got to have some bitterness in there, some aromas, some flavors. ABV, uh, alcohol by volume, is 7 to 12%. Uh, BJCP uh, vital statistics are IBU is 50 to 90, the color. So it's a little uh, darker in their eyes, in their opinion, uh, these judges. SRM, or IBUs, I mean, I said uh, uh, darker. Uh, uh, IBUs, uh, 50 to 90. Uh, so 50 to 90, it's about 10 off. I got that uh, mixed up, sorry. The color now is 30 to 40, so they're kind of within the same range. OG uh, is 1075 to 1115. Uh, final gravity would be 1018 to 1030. In other words, ABV would be like it would be like seven and a half to eleven percent is what I calculated. But they say eight to twelve, um, and you could you can calculate this by subtracting the original gravity from the final gravity. Then you multiply this number that number by 131.25. The resulting number is your alcohol percentage, um, and that is what I got from. The KITCHN.com, how to check and control alcohol levels. Um, now, correct me, Brian, if I'm wrong there, please. I know you, you I, I love that you're there to help me out. So if you want to correct me on that, if I'm wrong, um, go for it. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, Brian. Arcade, cheers. <laughs> Meow. Lactose changed the game. Yeah, the sweet stouts. Sweet stouts are good too. I love those. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure I'm not preaching the wrong things here. Oh, there's my brewing uh, notes. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, you can't see them yet. We're not on screenshot. So, um. All right, we're 18 minutes in. Okay, so you can also, you can go to brewersfriend.com. Brewers, that would be plural, B-R-E-W-E-R-S, friend.com. It's not in my description, but, and use their ABV cal calculator. Or you can go and just get Beersmith. They do it all for you in that program. So um, it's good to know the calculations, though. It's good to know all the math. In case you didn't have that, maybe you were in the desert and didn't have your computer or anything and you had to brew a beer and you had to go off the top of your head. Well, it's good to know the math. So, hey, Michelle, cheers. All right. It's good to have you here. All right. <laughs> so from craftbeer.com, the food pairings, they say, is foie gras, foie gras. I want to say that's how you say it. Aged cheeses and flourless chocolate cake. Ugh, that sounds weird. Um, serving a snifter. At 50 to 55 degrees, so not quite temp, a little bit out, maybe an hour out of the fridge, 45 minutes or so, hour maybe. Commercial examples would be Bell's Brewery Expedition Stout. Uh, the North Coast Brewing Company has an old, they have old Rasputin Imperial Stout, and then 2SP Brewing Company has the Russian, so that's kind of cool. Um, the appearance, the color should be black. The clarity should be opaque, cannot see through it. Carbonation, visual, carbon on the carbonation should be slow to medium rising bubbles. Uh, pretty much everything this beer had. Alcohol is noticeable. Hop, you want hop aroma and flavor a medium high to high with floral, citrus, and or herbal hop aromas. Hop bitterness is medium high to very high and balanced with the malt character. 
The malts, you want bittersweet chocolate, cocos, and coffees. Esters, you're going to get fruity esters. They're generally high, which I got uh, like a little, uh, what did I say, plummy. Uh, phenols isn't common to the style. Doesn't have that spice or funkiness that you're not wanting. I, I don't know if I could do the, that in this. Uh, sensations, uh, the body is mouth coating. Like I said, carbonation, low to medium. Yep. Finish length, long, attenuation, medium. Um, so you want, you still got that sweetness, but it's, uh, it would be, that would be considered like how the, well, that would be like how the yeast is eating the, 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 uh, the sugars in the fermentation, how fast it eats. I, I believe I'm right there. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, hops. Ingredients. The hops. Uh, they're, they're mentioning Horizon and Kent Goldings. I did read that you do want kind of the one guy was saying that he liked a uh, more of a high of an alpha. Uh, maybe something that kind of just brought off the sweetness just enough to kind of accent a slight uh, hoppiness in there. And then a lot will a lot of people will put in like uh, secondaries. Um, well, they'll, they'll put in, uh, they'll put hops in the secondary fermentation and dry hop. Um, you can whirlpool it out. You can, uh, just add flavors, especially for the American, um, the American Imperials. Um, the malts are pale, black roasted barley, special B, Munich, chocolate, pale chocolate. And from BYO.com written by BYO staff, they have a brewer by the name of Dan Rogers, uh, from Big Rock Chop House in Birmingham, Michigan. And he says the key to a successful imperial stout is the grain bill. Um, his rule of thumb is to use only roasted barley and stouts, no chocolate malt, and keep the mash thick. About 3.5 pounds per gallon is good. First runnings, no less than 1.1 1 .1 or 1.0 uh, on the specific gravity. If you can step mash it, it is best to break down the enzymes. Until you, is just so you can reach your um, your uh, conversion. Um, you want to sh if if you don't do the step mash, you want to shoot for 151 degrees in your mash, and uh, of course let it sit for 60 minutes or however long it takes to uh, convert your starches to sugars. Um, so the water varies on your location. Of course, you can mess with the water if you wanted to. If you're a scientist, go for it. Uh, yeast, they say to use, this is all again from, uh, uh, craftbeer.com, but, uh, W the, uh, uh, the, uh, WLPO one California ale, uh, which is the, um, one behind me. Oh, it's on my green screen. Fucking, um, um, my labs or why yeast 1056 American ale. They tend to have a higher attenuation rate and work well with these big beers and at a range of different, at, at a range of different temperatures. If you want a more complex beer, you could consider yeast that produce more char uh, characterful esters and alcohols, such as a British ale yeast. Stick with British strains that will attenuate well, uh, like White Labs WLP 007 Dry English Ale Yeast or Y Yeast 1028 London Ale. Or you can use the Danster, the Danstar uh, Not Nottingham Dry Yeast if you use dry yeast. Right on. Depends on the acidity of the grist. Right on. Thank you, Brian. Awesome. Um, see, that's why I like having you here, man. <laughs> Please check out Thrash Metal. He's awesome as hell. He's a very good brewer, too. He knows his shit. Um, as well as Bumpy Road. I like Bumpy, too. Bumpy Road Brewery, go check him out. He's on my Monday. I'm on his Monday. He's on my Tuesday. And uh, just a great dude. So both these guys are. Um, okay, so... I'm just going to do this real quick. I, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to go too crazy here because we got to get into this. Um, this is coming from an article. Let me take a sip and breathe and read the, read the comments for a sec. Michelle, it's so good to see you here. I'm such a nice, you are very nice, very nice girl. Um, boy, that's good. Tobacco is tobacco. Yeah. Like a cigar. I just to brew a beer. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> it's the forest beer, man. <laughs> uh, 
All right. So, um, fuck, man, where are we going here? Um, so this is from BYO.com uh, again. I like to go to these guys. I, I don't know. I, I like that they have different – they have award-winning – you know, uh, brewers on here that talk about their experiences with, with the, uh, with brewing their beers. Um, and I think it's really interesting to see how each of them has kind of a different, uh, opinion also. And it, and it's really cool to have that. I, I love opinions. I love, they're not just like assholes. Everyone has one. They are an opinion that someone has based on their experience. So, um, that should be accepted by everyone. You should listen to those opinions because it's very important. So, uh, keep the special be on the light side. See, and I wouldn't have known that cause I haven't brewed in a very long time. And I do remember that being kind of, uh, that kind of had, didn't it have kind of like a fruitiness to it or something? It was kind of, I don't know. I can't really remember. It's been so long since I brewed. And now, th now this whole idea of me doing this isn't to teach you how, to do it it's actually just kind of introducing these styles to you guys and uh again if there's information that i'm uh misconstruing <laughs> please you know like brian's helping me out uh just correct me and uh and we all work together eventually i'll i'll be brewing my own beer so we'll, we'll get that experience out and we'll knock it out dead but um so much fun though tangy bitter i do remember kind of a tanginess that was kind of tangy um so I just wrote a lot of uh, notes here, but Mar uh, Maris Otter malt sounded like a good one to, to use. And it's a rich and more expensive malt from what I recall um, and a little more richer. Um, it, it seemed, I don't know. I, I, I think it would be good uh, for the, for the complexity of this or not. I, I don't want it too complex though. Um, so, so just a bunch of notes here. Every Imperial Stout needs roasted malt notes and caramel also. Experimenting with the amounts and the colors and roasted malts is a great way to change the character of your beer. The roast, chocolate, and coffee character of the style comes from the use of a highly kiln malts. Um, you want to use about 77 to 20 percent of the grit in the grist of these. So I'm, I'm seeing 50-50 mix. Um, like this guy says, 50-50 mix of highly kiln grains with lighter kiln grains, uh, like chocolate and roast barley, give a nice balance of sharper roasted notes and less burnt coffee chocolate notes. Um, keep in mind that beer is using the higher side of, of the, like if they're using 20% in the grist, it's going to be somewhat acrid, irritatingly strong and unpleasantly smelly. Uh, when young and will require considerable aging time. That's another thing. If you're going to go big, go real big on the hops as well, because if you're going to shelf life that, by the time two years comes around, those hops will be gone. So you want that to kind of, you want to go a little bigger on your, uh, on your BUGU, on your bitterness unit, gravity unit ratio. Keep it simple. And that is a very good model to have, uh, to go by. Man, 23KC, what's up, man? All right. <laughs> Good to see you, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yeah, so I like the 50-50. I think that's cool. I think roasted barley and uh and um and and this otter. Just a 50-50 boom boom. There you go. Might work. Uh, for caramel flavors, you could add a little uh, dark crystal 80 or something like that, maybe, or like one, I don't know, 150 is a little darker, but uh, gives it a caramelized raisin plum note. Um, in addition to some mid color, you can add, you can do this. I'm just saying, uh, you can also add mid color crystal 46 to 40 to 60, um, which adds some caramel flavors and some residual sweetness uh, to help balance the bitterness of the roasted grains and hops. But you don't want to add it to where it's overwhelming. You want everything to be nice and easy. Uh, don't want to add a lot of low-color crystal malts, negative 30. It adds sweetness which much car with, without much caramel character. Also watch the total amount of crystal malt. And if, if, it is, if it exceeds 10%, it can result in an overly sweet and heavy beer. Um, if you want more complexity or increased head retention, you can add other malts like wheat malt, victory, Munich, 
Uh, they're common ones to add, but you can add other ones as well. Um, One twenty malt, bring in, bring in chocolate malt to bring it forward. Some chocolate in there too, yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's make this beer. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go um, on the hops. I think I'm gonna go with uh, North. I might go. I might go Horizon, and then do like Northern Brew or East Kent Goldings. So I'll go Horizon at the sixty, and then a real late. Uh, addition, even maybe at Whirlpool or even at 10, five minutes or so, put East Clint Kent Goldings just for some flavor. Maybe even at 10 minutes might be all right. What do you think? Let's do this. All right, I'm going to share this. Um, one sec. How you guys doing? Good to have you here. Thank you. I know it gets a little boring. I know it does. I'm sorry. Let me have another drink. I'm getting warm and fuzzy. Oh, Kent Goldings and Horizon. Sounds great, right? Kind of goes in between it all and just gives it right, just the amount that you want. I think Horizon's a great choice. Um, awesome. Thanks, Brian. Are you, are you, uh, are you like setting up a recipe? To, yeah. Yes, I am. And I'm at, I'm gonna brew these on my on my on my Wednesdays when I get my brew. I'm, I'm actually gonna go into construction in about a week, so everything's on the go right now. So and it'll be in my little home brewery, but it's gonna be a cool brewery. So uh, <laughs> prepare yourself, and it'll be an all day liver, probably four or five hours. I'm just gonna live it up and then go on uh, beer chugs after that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, check out Beer Chugs too. He's a, that's a great channel. He'll, he's where I'm going after this, if I can make it. I might hopefully I can make the second round or something. Um, so let's make a, let's make this let's make this let's make this let's get it done. Share on the screen now. All right, let me. There's my beautiful backyard. I got a bunch of hops back there. They're getting huge. Okay, so this, I use beer smith. Um, it's easy to use once you get the hang of it. You can see all the beers I've made already here. We're going to go ahead and add a recipe. Um, let's see. Here. I think I paid like 50 bucks for it or something. I forgot what I paid. Put the name in. So this is going to get boring, but we're just, and I'll check back with the chat as I go. So let's go, beer man. Just follow my cursor. And whatever else go is going on. Uh, it's beer time. Let's say uh, American girl. Oh. We're going to go. Uh, man, I always fuck this up. So I'm just going to change it. We'll go back to uh, 10. Change it down to 10 down here. Jesus, get out of my way. And, and then we want to change this down here to um, where's Stouts at? <laughs> Hold on, let me slow down a second. Where's I? Oh, there it is. Okay. Intensive flavor, big dark ale with Raja. Da, 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 da. Okay, so. I'm going to go 90 minutes on my boil. That's what I was thinking. So you boil it for 30 minutes, and then instead of doing step mashing, I'm going to I'm gonna just kind of like boil it down. And when I'm not – excuse me, I'm backwards here. I'm not going to step mash. I'm going to go straight in for a single infusion. And then when I boil, I'm going to go 90 minutes. So at 60 is – It'll boil 30 minutes, and then 60 minutes I'll throw in my bitter. So we'll do a single infusion. Corn sugar is not what I'm going to be using. I'll be using forced carbonation uh, in my tanks. Let me check with you guys here. Smokey, man, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. That's, so, that's very kind of you, man. Oh, man, Thrash, thank you, dude. Thank you, man. 
You guys are excellent, man. I love it, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. You just heard a lawnmower? Yeah, you heard that? <laughs> I know everyone's love. It's the neighborhood mating call. Like, it makes you want to go out and mow your own lawn. <laughs> Way to keep it going. Right on. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> All right, so... We're gonna we're gonna add our fermentables. Let's add. Uh, I'm gonna go with Maris Otter. Uh, what time are we on right now? Thirty five. We can do this. We can do this. This can be quick. Maris Otter, where are you? Pale Maris. There it is. And we want to add. So we're doing fifty fifty. So I'll add. Um, I'll just. Throwing like 16 for now, I guess. Just to start it up. It's probably way low for 10, but and let's just add everything first. We'll adjust numbers after. So a little uh we can go some caramel. Um and Brian was saying, I'm gonna do a garden what Brian's saying. So let, let's uh, I, I want you guys to 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 help me with this, and then we'll and then we'll all brew it together. So 120, a little 120. That, that's what's cool about this. Um, we'll, we'll just throw in, like I said, we'll adjust numbers after. 120. Let's go with uh, a little bit of uh, chocolate, small amount of chocolate for, um, let's see, where are you? Let's go, let's just use the U.S. chocolate. Since we're making an American, we're going all U.S. And... Special B, stay away from a small amount. Just use a small amount. So, oh, special roast is what we wanted um, for our main things, or other part of it. It said 50-50, but 20, 20 is on the higher. I probably want to go as shelf life as possible, so we'll probably go for the highest uh, original gravity po or the highest percentage possible. Um, but let's uh, – I'll just throw in uh, – I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think, man? Let me go back to you and see what you say. We have 15 minutes to get it done. we got to hurry, dude. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw in uh, – we'll just throw in six for now. I don't know if I'm lying to myself when I say that or not. I'm just kind of um, – all right. So that's 20, 25, 16. Let's see. So we're going to – let's see. Hold on. That's hard to do, dude. That is really hard to like calculate, dude. I'll sit here forever trying to get this done. Anyway, let's just go. I'm fucking lost right now, dude. But we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Let's do this. I want to get into the green, so I'm going to keep going up, 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 up. This is a big beer. We're going to go to about 18 pounds of fucking. Oh, you say, oh, yeah. No, special. A oh, roasted barley. I don't want roasted barley. I want roasted barley. I don't want special roast. Hold on a second. Fuck that. I want roasted barley. Where's barley at? <laughs> That's the wrong thing, dude. That took it way high. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Wait, hold on. Go back up. Colors way overboard, dude. Come down with that, homie. Oh. 
Dude, what do I do? Let me go to you, Brian. I need your help. <laughs> Coffee, keep light. My third. You said BUG would, BUG would be crazy. Uh, the, uh, that is one thing they said. BUG, 0.74 is what I'm going to probably go for, but I'm going to go for the higher because I want because I want to shelf it. I might go for 0.8. Fuck. Jim Jones. Color is off the fucking hook, dude. That's because I've got 10 pounds of roasted barley in there. <laughs> Why is the color so... Let's go down with that. How do you do this? The color's not even moving. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, dude. We're at 10% right there. I like 10%. Let's stay with 10%, but it's, it's going to change. Dude. Four pounds? Fuck. That's not even like that's only well ten. It didn't change the color at all. <laughs> it should be opaque, you said it yourself. I know, and I can't get it to be it's like <laughs> that color is like they're going 30 to 40. What did I say was the fucking... Oh, my God. What did I say was the fucking color of it, dude? Where's the statistics at? There we go. Um, SRM, 30 to 40. That's what they're saying here. So, and we're at 47. Chocolate malts. I don't have anything there now. Uh, hey, man. I'm uh, screwing up big time here. But it's okay. I'm not embarrassed. This is part of learning. Fucking 32 pounds of Maris Otter. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Third, brought that the SRM came down to 37.1 when I brought it to two and a half pounds of roasted barley, 30 almost 33 pounds of Maris Otter Pale Malt, eight ounces, half pound of chocolate malt, half pound of crystal malt 120. Holy shit, that made me sweat. Too much base malts. It is too much, dude. It shouldn't be that high. 20 pounds and 3 pounds. Here, hold on. We'll get it. We'll get it, Thrash. We'll get it, Thrash. So we're, we're, we're at a... We're not at where I want to be, though. Dude, I'm lost right now, homie. This isn't working for me. Struggling. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, I gotta get you that actually. This is where Beer Man struggles, man. Everyone's serious. I might miss my first sesh of uh, beer chugs, but that's all right. How do they say? I don't understand how they say go 50-50 or not 50-50, but well, yeah, 50-50 of like light over dark. So you go, this is 83.33% I'm using of, of a base malt. Three pounds is not, that's only 12.5% being 12, 30, 40, 50, 16%. 
it's like a quarter or more, but not nearly as 50-50. I can do this. I promise. I'm 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 gonna do this. Okay, I need more beer. <coughs> oh Jesus, that's sweet. Okay. Too much, too much base malt. But the color is really dark right now. With that three pounds, the chocolate and the caramel. I think this is why he said he likes to just use roasted barley and base malt. So let's just take this shit off. I'm going to go with that. For now, I'm really going to go with that. So let's bring this up a little more. Bring this down. Way down. The color I got to watch, though. See, we're at the top right there. 40.9. That's giving me a 4.8. No, come on. See what I'm saying? This is fucked up. It's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> okay. 50-50 to me would be like 15 pounds of pale malt and 15 pounds of roasted barley. But look where that takes you. Way, like 99.2 on the color. Although the SRM is way off the it's only a 6.8 oh yeah yeah use light munich how much Dude, this is hard. This is a big beer, dude. <laughs> this is a really fucking big beer, dude. <laughs> oh my god, dude. We're at <laughs> Oh fuck, let's use the let's get the hops in there. I'll work on this. Oh. Okay, so Horizon are you realizing there it is we'll go uh i'm just gonna put this for now 60 minutes gotta go a little more than that <laughs> No, less than that. And then add uh um he's can goldings. Is that what I said? Uh, yeah, like uh, three minutes. Sixty-three, seventy-two. Yeah, that's I, I'm okay with that, but I still have to adjust the. Uh, I still have to adjust this. Uh, I mean, we're balanced right now, but the color is like really, really dark. So, um, right? I know, man. It is easier. <laughs> yeah, no, we, I, we need to, man. We need to. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> I, I just, uh, I'm just in my own world trying to figure it out. Um, I'm just confused with it, but I'm gonna have to go back to this. It was kind of a, a misfire on this one. I'm gonna have to look at this more and, and study it more. I didn't realize how uh, how difficult this was to understand as far as like balancing out the malts. Um, I mean, if I wanted an 8.8 .8 right now with 99.8 SRMs, uh, which is very dark, um, 63.5 IBUs, 8.7. I'm just saying, I mean, uh, 1087. I mean, we're getting we're getting 71.9 percent efficiency, um, but I don't know I don't know where the malts lie right now. So, uh, yeah, my uh, Irish moss. East. Uh, the, um, what was it? I like the American, uh, what was that one? I want the, uh, why East 1056? Um, they, they, I mean, honestly, the, Everyone that I've taught, well, it said if you're going to use one pack to do a starter, um, which I would probably do a starter anyway, um, but I'm going to throw two down. It does say to go crazy with your, uh, oops, with your yeast, but there's so many mixed conversations on that piece alone. So I'm going to stop here. It wasn't embarrassing. It was actually a learning lesson, to be quite honest. I, I'm I'm gonna get back to this. I didn't give up on it, uh, but I was very confused with that. So, the you can see the malts. I mean, fuck, dude, that lost me, dude. That was like doing, that was like trying to figure out an algebraic expression or something, some kind of weird math problem. So, um, cheers to that. You know, oh man, Nathan, what's up? Jeremy, Nina, Blake, what's up, guys? All right, ma'am. Well, that kind of went longer. I'm going to hold off on my second review. I want to keep this at an hour. Um, I'm going to head over to Beer Chugs and see. It's probably loaded, though. But if anything, I'm going to go in the chat and hopefully make the uh, second sesh. Uh, but um, that was a challenge tonight, guys. Definitely. Brian, I'll see you over there, brother. Thank you for everything. I appreciate it. We'll talk for sure. All right, so you guys take care. I appreciate it so much. I go to Beer Chugs. That's where I'm going to go next. Uh, much love, you guys. Chat, love you guys so much. Thanks for your help, Brian, and uh, thanks for your support, everyone. I really do. Um, don't 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 think because I didn't get this recipe done doesn't mean I'm a stupid head. It's just sometimes that's how it is, you know. Maybe it's a lack of understanding, may, which in this case it is. Um, but I'm not bugged by it. <laughs> so right on that was fun that was a fucking educational moment for me so and i hope for everyone so all right much love guys see you over beer chugs cheers